Greetings, comrades, friends, brothers, sisters, and fellow commanders. Welcome to my first gaming video, one which was originally planned as a how-to on a completely different game. The huge clamor that has gone up over the course of the last three weeks in regard to Elite Dangerous and the launch of Odyssey has, however, forced me to rearrange my plans somewhat. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Elite Dangerous, it is a space simulation that is set uh, over a thousand years into the future after mankind has developed intergalactic space travel and has settled a large number of star systems, which are split for the most part between three competing superpowers. The game is one of, if not the oldest video games that is still in existence. I even remember playing different versions many moons ago, and when I rediscovered the game quite by accident last year, due entirely to skimming through the PlayStation 4 deals page, I was ecstatic. The game itself is an open world, and I believe the largest open world game in existence, as it's a one-for-one -one remake of the Milky Way. In the game, there are a number of different career paths, and you can focus on one, or as many as you like as you move up in rank through four, well, three categories, because very few people go into the fourth route. When I first picked up the game last year, I was originally looking forward to the space combat aspect, but in the last year, that's actually the activity that I have engaged in the least with exploration and mining being the ones that I am continually drawn towards. I picked up the free version of Horizons through the uh, Epic Store last year in anticipation of the release of Odyssey. But I continued to play solely on the PS4 until the release of Odyssey, I might have logged in maybe two, three hours on my Epic account. And for those of you unfamiliar with the game, Odyssey at $40 was an almost full price expansion to Elite Dangers that was prematurely released in June. And this premature release is, for the most part, the reason for the hue and cry that was raised in social media forums and by many of the YouTube creators. I say for the most part because there is an additional factor involved here, which I believe is also the reason for the constant refrain of is Elite Dangerous dying that those of us who play and follow the game have been hearing. What is this additional factor, you might ask? Well, it's petulance, of course. Last year, as Frontier Development started releasing their diaries in the lead up to the release of Odyssey, much, or rather most, of the speculation and anticipation, at least by YouTube content creators, was focused on ship interiors and whether Odyssey would include them. What's meant by that is being able to get up from one's pilot seat and roam about one's ship. That's right. And when FDev announced last year that interiors would not be available with the initial release of Odyssey, a collective sigh of disgust issued forth. And from that moment on, it was fairly obvious that unless the Odyssey release was sublime, it would be panned. In the event, the release was, as has been correctly pointed out by many others, premature and correctly panned. It was not rushed. It was released before it was ready, most likely at the behest of the marketing department, but that's idle speculation and not really relevant as this kind of thing is not the sole purview of either Frontier, gaming, or the entertainment industry in general, but rather it is something that has become a systematic feature of capitalism over the course of the last 20 years. Boeing being probably the most egregious example of this. There were a number of issues with the release. I mean, not least of which was the fact that the servers kept crashing. The Ballyhood upgrading of graphics left quite a bit to be desired, in some cases being a downgrade, making things look less realistic and more cartoonish. There were issues with the first person shooter missions and a number of bugs in general that made playing the game difficult to say the least. In the interim, however, most of these issues have been resolved, though I cannot speak for the first person shooter missions since other than the exploration aspect, Space Legs has not interested me too much. Although I have been seeing conflicting posts about this aspect in social media posts, some saying that they are not having any issues and others complaining that there's still quite a ways to go to fix things. I have been playing strictly on Odyssey since the fifth update, and with very few exceptions, I have not had any issues with the game. The graphics have been improved, both traveling in space, mining in the asteroid fields, 
on planets and moon surfaces. Um, the topography is much more diverse than in Horizons, and the atmospheric effects makes the game even more beautiful than previously. I play on a laptop, and I have not had a single issue with slow frame rates since the fifth update. So, this begs the question, why the refrain of, is Elite Dangerous dying? If the refrain had been started at the release, then the question would have had a little bit more relevance. But coming after the fifth update, and from all of these different sources, from all of those who bemoan the lack of ship interiors, methinks I smell a rat. Especially when not a few of the people who claim that the weed is dying have made videos over the recent period saying that interiors are the kind of quality of life issue that would smooth over the horrid release of Odyssey. Yes, that's right. The same people who want ship interiors and claim that this quality of life issue would smooth things over with the player base are the exact same people who are constantly complaining about the grind in the game. And as it happens, that is one of their biggest complaints about Odyssey, the grind. Yet, yet they want to smooth things over by, by creating a nonsensical grind. Let's make everyone walk through their ships every time they want to disembark. Every time they want to board. Just so they can peruse the ship and see their locker room, their toilet, their bedroom, or maybe, maybe even a rec room. And hey, Frontier Development, while you're at it, why not put an arcade in that rec room so that they can play an entirely different game? Seriously. I've heard of only two gameplay reasons for interiors. One, being able to be boarded and having uh, first person shooter combat aboard your ship. That would make this an entirely different kind of game and essentially force people who suck at first person shooter to play only in solo. The other reason, slightly uh, better than the first, was having to race through the ship to your cockpit to take off with people hot on your trail attacking you. This is a slightly better reason again, but seriously, how often is that gonna happen? And for that reason, every single time you get in and out of your ship, you wanna add 30 seconds to a minute to not just your playtime, but my playtime and everyone else's? Thanks, <laughs> but yeah, no thanks, I'll pass. For quality of life improvements, let's talk about being able to change the color of the HUD easily and without changing the color of the radar. That and fixing the UI would be something that would make everyone happy. There are, however, two things that do need to be fixed. And that's the heat map feature for finding geological signals, as well as the number of geological signals one finds on planet and moon surfaces. The biological ones work semi-decently, but the geological, for geological signals, it's just atrocious. I've had less than a 50% success rate using it, and even when I find geological sites on the planet or the moon, at most, there were two. So for finding materials, I've been forced to resort to going back to Horizons, and then once I've collected all the mats that I've needed, then I come back to Odyssey. So, in conclusion, I just want to say that Elite Dangerous has survived for almost 40 years. And while it may not be as strong after the shoddy release of Odyssey, it is nowhere even close to reaching the stage where it would need resuscitating, much less to be buried. It is still, hands down, the best space simulation out there, and that is why the news of the imminent death of Elite Dangerous is greatly exaggerated.